Hello, welcome to your mock exam run through. Um, this will help you to realise how to do these exams. Um, this mock exam that you just did, I will do in four different videos. So I'll do one video on Christian beliefs, that's going to be this one. Then the next one's going to be on Christian practices. Then I'm going to do Hindu beliefs and Hindu practices. Um, so let's just get started. One hour 45 minutes is how long you've got to do this exam so that's roughly about 25 minutes for each question um, so as soon as you get an exam write this stuff your center number your name all that kind of stuff write that in and then turn right over and get on with the questions this is what it's going to look like so um, question number one which one of the following is the idea that God is free in one and you've just got to tick the box hopefully you know it's the trinity is the idea that god is free in one so do that and move on um question two give two reasons why the disciples believed jesus was alive after his resurrection well one reason is that they saw him um another reason would be that maybe his tomb was empty Any reasons why they believe he was alive after his resurrection will do, but any two, you're going to get two marks. So don't waste too much time on this question. That's three marks already. Move on to the more valuable questions, like this one, which is, explain two ways in which the belief that God is just influences Christians today. That's a bit of an annoying word, just. It, it means fairness. Um, it means that God is fair and good. So explain two ways in which the belief that God is fair and good influences Christians today. How might that influence them? What might it make them do? So reason number one is um, it might influence them whoops, to do good actions. And help others. Um, for example, they will know from Jesus' teachings that a just God would want them to treat people equally. sorted. Um, so what's another way in what, which it might influence them? Oh yeah, it might. It might make them um, worship more and follow the teachings of the religion. I'll name it Christianity. It'll make them follow the teachings of Christianity because um, God will judge them fairly well, I've, oh, I hate writing my writing's awful I keep spelling words wrong and then I have to correct them um, it will make because God will judge them fairly and allow them into heaven great so there's two reasons there uh, two ways in which believing that God is just will influence Christians today that's how it might make them act move on question number four explain two Christian teachings about the means of salvation that question is really annoying to me because I don't think that many young people know what means means. Um, means is like how you, the means of something is how you go about it. Um, so if your means of transport is a train, that's how you're going to get there. So you've got to explain two Christian teachings about how you get, achieve salvation. It's another annoying word because salvation just means that you're being saved by God or saved 
and allowed into heaven. So this is two Christian teachings about how you get to heaven, basically. So I'm just, I hate the way they worded that. Although hate is a very strong word. So I'm just mildly annoyed about how they worded that. I think it could be done better. But when you're stuck on a question like this, just don't give up. Just really try and think what it means. And if you still can't work it out, just try and blag it with some stuff that you might think is relevant. Never leave a question totally unanswered because there's no point, you definitely get zero then, but if you write something that's not entirely relevant, you might still pick up some points. So I'm just going to pause and think about two Christian teachings about the means of salvation. Well, okay, I think I've worked it out now. Um, the first one, the first teaching is that um, you can be saved through Jesus. Just going to explain that a bit more because I want to get some points. Christians say that Jesus is God and so his teachings provide um, a Christian with um, some direction towards God. So what did Jesus say about how you get salvation? Well, Jesus' main teachings Jesus said that you should I'm going to put a Bible quote in here Love God and love your neighbour Oops and by honouring God and those around you, um, you can be saved. Right, that includes a Bible quote as well, because it says there, refer to sacred writings or another source of Christian belief and teaching in your answer. As long as you do that, you're going to get a couple of points. Um, so it's worth five, though, and I've sort of I've mentioned one um, Christian teaching there about how Jesus is the way to salvation. Um, I'm going to think of another one now and get two more points. Um, what? How else can Christians be saved? Um, oh yeah, other ways. Include or I should have said other teachings include um, uh, you can repent for your sins Christians believe that we are born in sin, born into sin, but by um, being baptised, hopefully you learnt about baptism, your sins are washed away. Oh no, I've run out of space. This is I'm glad this happened because I can teach you now what you should do in a real exam. So I just need to make sure I know what I'm saying. Your sins are being washed away, then... Right, when you run out of space, go to the last question on the, on the question. Then there's another page. But turn the other page and you'll see here, extra space. So what you should do is just write the question number, which is 014 and just carry on what you were writing. 
um, I was saying something about how Christians should um, get baptised to wash away their sins. Um, so, by then, um, repenting and confessing their sins, a Christian can um, wipe the slate clean on a regular basis and keep trying to live a good life. This is the way to accept God's forgiveness and join him in heaven. And that's how you can get salvation. Right. Oh, that's the first bit. So, got them three points, got those four marks about how it influences them. Got that one, I just want to check this sentence makes sense. Other ways include that you can repent for your sins. Christians believe that we are all born into sin, um, but by being baptised your sins are washed away. Then, by then repenting, oh, just get rid of that then. Then, by repenting and confessing their sins, a Christian can wipe away uh, wipe the slate clean on a regular basis and keep trying to live a good life. It's quite a long sentence, but I don't care. This is the way to accept God's forgiveness and join him in heaven. Salvation. Brilliant. Right. That's going to get all the points. Right. One more question left of this first bit. Um, it says, the Bible tells Christians all they need to know about God's creation. Evaluate this statement. Evaluate just means weigh up. So just decide if it's a good statement or not. And it says in your answer you should refer to Christian teaching, give reasoned arguments to support this statement, and then give reasoned arguments to support a different point of view, and reach a justified conclusion. So really that's telling you that what all you need to get high marks in this one is write down three paragraphs that evaluates that that evaluate that's evaluates that statement. Um I don't know what I think about this statement really. The Bible tells Christians all they need to know about God's creation. I haven't really got an opinion on that. Um, but when you when you do that, when you come and do this exam, you probably won't care about a lot of the things that they ask you. So don't worry about that. Just We'll just make our opinion up. Um, my tip, if you're not sure about what you think about something, is always start off by agreeing with the statement. No matter what it says, just agree with it and think of some reasons um, why it might be a good thing to say. So I'm going to think about this. The Bible tells Christians all they need to know about God's creation. Right, okay. So I need a few reasons why that's true. So I'd say, I agree because... Just by writing that, it starts getting you thinking about the thing, and now you've just got to finish that sentence. I don't even know what I think yet. So I agree, because in the Bible, the creation story explains the main ideas about how and why the world came to be. Uh, it helps Christians to understand their relationship with God. Uh, for example, 
the creation story um, explains lots of details about how God made the world. It says, so I'm just going to prove that I know that it, ex that it includes lots of details about how the world was made. It says that first God made light, separated it from darkness, he made the sea and the sky, um, land and plants, and he made the sun, stars and the moon, then he made birds and fish, and finally human beings. Oh, I forgot, I missed out all the other animals. <laughs> human beings after other land animals. Um, it then says that God gave humans responsibility over creation uh, what else does it say? it also tells them that we are made in God's image. Um, so I'm going to argue now that it that sort of tells Christians all they need to know about the creation because this tells Christians um, what God made. It generally gets the order right. I know there's a couple of bits you could pick out, um, and I will do in a minute. I'll have a go in a minute. It generally gets the order right. So it tells him what he made, the order right, um, and how long it took. and that there is a purpose to creation finally it tells them that God was happy with um, it so that's a really good long that's quite a long paragraph there about why the Bi um the bible does tell christians all they need to know about creation it tells them what that god made the world what he made what the order was like and what the sort of point of it was so that's loads about you know everything they need to know so i'll start the next page with um what more <laughs> would they need to know bit of a rhetorical question there and now um, I'm going to argue the other side I'm going to argue that it doesn't tell them all they need to know so I can start by saying that many others I don't know who I don't know who these many others are doesn't matter who cares may disagree many others may disagree because they might have unanswered questions 
about creation. Um, now I need to think of some of the things that they might um, have a go at it for not telling them. Um, for example, the creation story or the Bible doesn't mention the um, existence of dinosaurs. This is often raised as a criticism or inaccuracy. Is that two C's? Oh, doesn't matter. This is often raised as a criticism or inaccuracy of the Bible. And what else does it not tell them? It also is unclear about what light was created in Genesis 1. The sun isn't made until day 4. And why else do they need to know some other stuff? Um, it also isn't clear in the Bible if the creation story is to be taken literally or not. If evolution is true, then um, it is impossible that the process took uh, just six days. So those are some reasons why. Uh, the Bible doesn't tell Christians all they need to know because there's other questions that they might have about it. Um, what else? The Bible also um, doesn't state clearly why God created the world. So, there may be lots of um, things it doesn't tell them. Once you've written another paragraph saying why um, the Bible doesn't tell Christians everything they need to know about creation, You've got a little bit left at the bottom, maybe, for to just say your conclusion. I still don't know what my conclusion is. I'm not too fussed about this kind of thing, really. I mean, personally, I, I just don't mind. I think if people want to believe it literally, brilliant. Um, I, If people want to see it as a metaphor for some deeper truth, then that's great, too. I don't think it really matters. I don't know why people argue about it, because I just don't think it's that important, really. But um, but I need to say something. I've got to come up to a, with a conclusion. So, uh, hmm. in conclusion, I'm just going to say I agree with the statement. I agree because I still don't know why, though. Oh, that's a rubbish way to write because. It's better. Uh, in conclusion, I agree because, um, however... However you choose to read the Bible,
literally or symbolically. Um, you can find it useful to figure out your purpose in life. Oh, I've only got a couple of lines left. You can use it. Uh, you can find it useful to figure out your purpose in life. Um, the main message in the creation is that God created the world a for a sentence, how frustrating. Um, see, I've already written the other question up there, but just write 0, 01.5. So God created the world a good place and our role is to follow his instructions and guidance. I know in the Bible story it sort of symbolises um, disobeying God by obeying a snake and eating a fruit and things like that. But if you can see past that, I think it sort of makes sense that um, you've got to follow God's instructions. Um, it says that God is interested in the world. and wants us to uh, act in a loyal way to him and this will help Christians live their lives I think that's a bit of a weak ending really but I think if I was doing this in the real thing now I'll have um, uh, I'll run out of time it's really annoying that that's gone off just got to the end as well. Uh. So annoying. Why has the screen gone blank? Uh. Right, that's the end of the first video.